Hi, you guys. I hope you're doing good. This is section 10.7, which is using the discriminant. And you're going to use a discriminant to find out how many solutions are in a quadratic equation. Okay, so before I get to what the discriminant is, let me review with you. Section 10.6 was the quadratic formula. So again, the first thing you need to do is put it into standard form. Make it equal to 0. Line it up. And you got A, B, and C. Make sure you take the sign of each one um, along with the number. Okay. Here's the quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay. The discriminant is what's under the radical. So the B squared minus 4AC. Um, another name for what's under the radical is called the radicand. But in this case, because it's under the quadratic formula, we call that the discriminant. Okay. So when you go over here, to the discriminant. It's b squared minus 4ac. Again, that's what's under the radical, but you don't do the radical. So you don't take the square root. All you do is the b squared minus 4ac. Okay, so the book will ask you how many solutions, use the discriminants to find out how many solutions you have in a quadratic equation. Okay, all you do is put it into standard form, and I'll do some examples in a second. Put it into standard form. If your discriminant comes out to less than zero, which is negative, you're going to have one, um, no solutions. Okay. If your discriminant is zero, you're going to have one solution. And if your discriminant is greater than zero or positive, you're going to have two solutions. So graphically, it would look like this. If your discriminant is negative, you're going to have no solutions. That means your parabola never touches the x-axis because there's no solution. Remember, solutions are your x-intercepts. So in this case, it never touches. It could look like this. Or it could even look like this, okay? So as long as the parabola when you graph it doesn't touch the x-axis. If your discriminant is zero, you're going to have one solution. That means only the vertex will touch the x-axis, and that's your only solution, that one point there. Again, it could look like this, where it even goes downwards, okay? But only one point touches the x-axis because that's your only solution. If your discriminant is positive or greater than zero, you're going to have two solutions. That means it's going to cross the x-axis at two points. So you can see over here and over here. I marked it with the green arrows. That means you're going to have two solutions or two points on the graph where it crosses, the, the parabola crosses. OK, so here's some examples for you. The first one I have here is an equation. And again, the question will be, use the discriminant to find out how many solutions there are in this equation. The first thing I need to do is minus 1 because I need to make it equal to 0. And so I get 3x squared minus 5x minus 1 is equal to 0. Here's my a, here's my b, the negative 5, and here's my c is the negative 1. Okay, for the discriminant, again, it's just b squared minus 4ac. So I just need to fill that in. So b is negative 5 in parentheses squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 1. And I just need to solve that now. So it's negative 5 squared is 25, minus, this becomes negative 12, so minus negative 12 is positive 12, or plus 12. So my discriminant is 37, okay, which is positive, so I know I have two solutions. Okay, since 37 is greater than 0, I know I have two solutions. That means it's going to cross the x-axis. If I, if I were to graph it, I know it's going to cross at two different places. Okay? Here's the second equation. I need to minus 3x from both sides to make it equal to 0. So I get 4x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 0. Notice I put the minus 3x before the plus 5 because you've got to put it in standard form. So 4 is my a, negative 3 is my b, and 5 is my c. Again, I need to do the b squared minus 4ac. So b squared is negative 3 squared minus 4. a is 4, c is 5. So now I just do the b squared minus 4ac. So I get negative 3 squared is 9, minus 20 times 4 is 80 which is negative 71 
which is less than zero. So I know it's negative. So I know I'm going to have zero solutions. Okay. And again, graphically, if you had it like this, it would look something like this, where it never crosses the x-axis. Okay. The other way to think about this one is, if this was the radical on in the quadratic formula, and this was radical, and this was radical, and this was radical. Remember, you cannot have a negative number under the square root. Your answer is going to be no real solutions. So that's why there's no solve, because there's a negative under the radical. So you can think of it that way as well. Okay, so I'm just going to take it back off the radicals. Okay, and that's why that one turns out that way. Okay, here's my last example. A is an invisible 1, B is negative 6, and C is positive 9. Okay, I'm going to do B squared minus 4AC. So B is negative 6 squared. And again, in all of these examples, if you notice, I use parentheses around the B because it, um, when you substitute a number in for a variable, make sure you use parentheses so that it turns out positive 36. Okay? Minus 4 times 1 times 9. This becomes 36 minus 36, which is 0. Therefore, I have one solution. Okay, so an example with two solutions, zero solution, one, one solution. The reason for the zero, I showed you the reason for the, the negative having zero solutions. The reason for the discriminant being zero has one solution is, for example, if you came out with 3 plus or minus the square root of zero, over 2. The 0 just turns out when you split it, 3 plus 0 over 2 and 3 minus 0 over 2 still comes out to 3 over 2, 3 over 2. So really you only have one solution, which is 3 over 2. So when you have a plus or minus square root of 0, this just drops off. The plus or minus square root of 0 drops off, and that's why you only have one solution. Okay, hopefully that clarifies it for you. Again, the discriminant is B squared minus 4AC. Hope you have a great morning, day, or evening. Take care.